Praise the Lord. Greetings to you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm humbled to know that my testimony was a blessing to many. All glory to God. As John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Many of you requested me to share the same testimony in English so that you could share it with others who do not speak Malayalam. And I really hope and pray that this will be a blessing to many others too and we will all walk one more step closer to God. We as a family live here in London in UK for the last 20 years and I work as an advanced nurse practitioner in an ambulatory care unit in one of the hospitals here in London. Currently, I am redeployed to intensive care unit during this COVID-19 pandemic period. So I will be sharing my message with including the experiences of working in ICU during this pandemic period. During the uh, beginning period of COVID-19 here in UK, um, towards the end of March, um, 23rd of March on a Monday, when I got up to go to work, I was not feeling well in myself. But there was no clear symptoms, so I went to work. When I reached work, a servant of God, Pastor P.S. Jonikuti from Kerala called me and he told me, as he was praying, he was led by the Holy Spirit to give me a ring and to pray for me. And when I was at my unit, in my clinic, Patients had not started to come and my colleagues were also not reached to work. So I could pray with him loudly. He prayed for me earnestly in spirit. And when he concluded, my eyes were full of tears. I could feel the presence of God. I could feel the presence of Holy Spirit. And I realized how much God loves me. He is caring for me that he inspired one of his servants to call me and pray for me when I was not feeling well. And that was a reassurance for me from God that he is with me and his protection is over me. And I thank and praise for praise God for his love and mercy on me. And that day, towards the afternoon, I became more ill. I started to feel tired. I was getting headache and I had temperature of 38.2 degrees Celsius. Normal temperature is 36 to 37. So as per the guideline, I called my line manager and I told her that I'm not feeling well. I've taken two paracetamol and I could continue my shift for that day. But she told me that as per guidelines, she advised me to go home to get the COVID test. And then if I am, whenever I am asymptomatic, and if the test is negative, then to come back to work. So I returned home. The next day I had my um, COVID test. And on the third day, Wednesday, I was not feeling well at all. I was all day, I was in bed. I couldn't get up from bed. I was feeling really tired. The whole body was aching. I had headache, running temperature. I was taking medicine every four to six hourly. Many servants of God, my church, my pastor and family, my family, everyone was praying for me. And after 24 hours, I started to feel better. And I got much better within the next two days and I totally became asymptomatic during the weekend and I could feel that I'm ready to go back to work. My COVID test result was not back by then. But I heard from my two colleagues who does opposite shift to me in the ambulatory care unit that they both became ill and they both were going off sick. So there was no one to cover our clinic the next week, Monday to Friday. So I contacted my manager and I told her that I am asymptomatic now and I'm happy to come back to work. Only thing my COVID test is not back yet. Our clinic had to run, so she had no other choice, so she agreed to, for me to come back to work. And normally, the COVID test result takes 24 to 48 hours to come back. But my test result took two weeks to come back. And it, when it came back, the result said inconclusive. That wasn't familiar to me. Normally, the test result will be either positive or negative. 
and my consultant later explained to me what inconclusive means is they detected coronavirus in my throat swab so they couldn't declare it as negative but there at the same time there was no enough viral load in my swab to conclude it as positive hence they have written as inconclusive and they advised our occupational health department to contact me to see how i am doing clinically so the occupational health department called me and they asked me how i am doing and i told them i'm totally asymptomatic i'm already back to work and i'm fine so they were happy so i d- they did not needed to do anything further for me so when i went back to work on that monday the hospital was taking the next level steps due to the increasing number of corona patients they did not wanted any more people to come to hospital unnecessarily or anyone that whom we could avoid coming to hospital hence the hospital administrative team asked us to close down all the operation theaters recovery units outpatients departments clinics etc and to redeploy the staff who works there into covid-19 wards by this time many wards were turned to covid-19 wards due to the increasing number of patients coming with corona positive diagnosis so my clinic was also asked to close down so within the next two days we managed to close down our clinic we referred many of our patients to district nursing team whomever we could advise over the phone and then discharge from the clinic we did so and the remaining patients the consultants agreed to do telephone consultation and that's how we closed down our clinic and i am a nurse for 25 years and mainly my experience 13 years uh, i have worked in icu the remaining is mostly teaching experience so i was asked to go and work in intensive care unit because there were shortage of um, nurses with itu experience and more and more patients were admitted to intensive care unit so i was redeployed to intensive care unit and when i reached the intensive care unit that was our hospital is in three sites the main site already had an icu and i work in the second site where we had no icu before government had asked all the hospitals to open up icus due to increasing number of covid-19 patients hence our site they temporarily turned our orthopedic center into an icu and this was a new icu that opened and started to admit patients 1 2 3 and the size of the icu grew as the patients came in so my first day when i went into icu there were 22 patients it was the second week of opening that icu new icu there were 22 patients already and all 22 of them were corona positive and all 22 of them were intubated and on ventilators when i saw the death every day deaths in icu how sick those patients are and the intensity of the care that they required they needed that made me realize how much i was protected from my by my god the healing power of my god the power of prayer in my life the love and mercy the his grace upon me and i really thank and praise my god for not letting that virus which entered my body not to conquer me not to affect my health my god healed me my god answered the prayers and i thank and praise god even today for helping me after recovering for for helping me to work in that intensive care unit looking after covid-19 patients without the fear of death without the fear of being ill in such a high infectious area all glory to god god is good all the time psalm 46 verse 1 says god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble our hospital is giving the very best care for the staff especially those who work in intensive care unit we have in a fun more personal protective equipments we call it ppe we have hat to wear on our head covering all our hair we have goggles we have mask we have gowns we have gloves shoe covers everything that we need 
they make sure we wear the PPE properly. We get very regular breaks every four hours. We take out all this PPE and we are sent to breaks. We have plenty of food. We don't need to take any food from home. We have counseling services. Everything that a hospital could offer to their employees, we have everything. But I will say PPE is not enough to protect you from infection. God has to protect us. I'm not saying we should not wear PPE. We should abide by the regulations of the hospital. We, sh we must use the PPE that the hospital provide, but that's not everything. If God is not protecting us, we are not safe. That is why many frontline staff, even though they use PPE, this, many of them still fall sick and many do die. That tells us that God needs to protect us if we need to be 100% safe. At a glance, we may think this pandemic is to destroy us, but it is not true because God has a purpose behind this. Without God's knowledge, nothing happens in our life. Whatever happens in our life is for our welfare, not for evil. Let me give you a few examples. During this pandemic period, the local community around our hospital have come together to support us, the frontline staff. The love and unity among them grew up. They bring the moms who are sitting at home during this lockdown period. They bake cakes, they make snacks and send it to hospital for us to have during our break time. Children, they write many letters to us. They draw many cards saying, you are our heroes. We are sitting at home and while you are working hard in hospital, be safe. Work hard. We appreciate you. We love you. We are praying for you. So many encouraging words, thanking words, these children sent every day to us and it's all displayed in our break room. When we see them, our eyes are full of tears with gratitude for the support, the love, the care, the encouragement, the appreciation that we receive from them. The local supermarkets do send many things to hospital to help us, to support us, to show their gratitude. Hand creams, shower gels, so many things for the staff to use. The local restaurants, they do send hot food prepared every day at lunchtime to hospital. We have good food, good quality food, hot food during our break time because of those local restaurants. So all this tells us that there is something good coming out of this pandemic period. And not only that, people have started to turn to God during this difficult time because people have realized that wealth cannot save them. Science cannot protect them. It's only God who can protect us during a pandemic period. People have started to turn to God. Even in our hospital, my consultant is a born again Christian. And many a times after shift, we have we've talked to each other about word of God, about our church services, about starting a prayer meeting in our um, site, in our hospital, but it never happened. We really wanted to start a prayer group um, in our site, in our hospital. But during this pandemic period, we have started a prayer group and we do pray every day via Zoom for all the people who in all, all over the world. And hundreds of the staff, hospital staff have joined our prayer group. And it's God's mercy that we were able to start this. So many good things have come out of this pandemic period. So it is not to destroy us. God has a purpose behind this. During this pandemic period, while I am working in ICU, God taught me many lessons. He reminded me of many things. And I would like to share three of those thoughts with you, along with my experience in ICU. First of all, God reminded me that our life on this earth is very short compared to eternity. 
God reminded me that death is real and eternity is very long beyond our imagination. Our life on this earth is very short. Bible uses many descriptions to describe how short our life on this earth is. Bible says our life on this earth is like a mist. It is like a breath. It is like a passing shadow. It is like a period we go abroad and then come back home. In James chapter 4 verse 14 we read, "You are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes." We know how long mist last. Or when we are cooking the steam comes up and then it disappears. You don't know where it's gone. It's gone quickly. That short our life on this earth is. Psalm 144 verse 4 says, "Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow." We breathe 16 to 20 times in a minute. So each breath lasts roughly for 3 seconds. How short is 3 seconds? So Bible teaches us that our life on this earth is like a breath. We breathe in and if we can't breathe out we are gone that short our life is how long does a shadow last when the sun rises the shadow comes up and when the sun sets shadow there is no more shadow that's all the length of our life on this earth is it's like a passing shadow we go abroad it could be for a conference it could be for a holiday it could be for a job but we don't stay there for ever after our assignment we come back home it is the same way our life on this earth too we are foreigners on this earth this is not our home this is not our destination that reminds me of a speech that i did as a child during my school days uh, we had a nun sister in our school our teacher whom i used to like a lot she i used to love her a lot she used to write speeches and give to us children to buy hearted and then when there is elocution competitions we go and participate in one of the speeches she that she gave me the one of the sentences said like this our each heartbeat is a step towards our grave that day that sentence touched me when i learned it and even today i remember that our heart beats 70 to 100 times in a minute and god has kept a count for our heart how many times to beat in our lifetime and each time when our heart beats that count is coming down to a zero and when it reaches zero the heart stops that's all our lifetime on this earth is each time when our heart beats we are walking one more step closer to our grave so let's realize that our life on this earth is very short if we compare our life on this earth to a story that is written in many chapters that story does not finish here on this earth the last chapters to be written in eternity from this life to eternity we pass through death death is a transit it's a transition from life to eternity david knew this and hence he wrote in psalm 39 o lord make me know my end and what is the measure of my days let me know how fleeting i am behold you have made my days a few hand breaths and my lifetime is as nothing before you surely all mankind stands as a mere breath surely a man goes about as a shadow look how david is praying to let him know he's praying to god to let him know what his end is like how many more days are left for him he realizes that his life is like a breath and it is like a passing shadow 
Hence, he is praying to God to help him to be prepared for eternity. Let us also cling to this Lord. He has called us by our name. We are 100% safe in his hands because God said, I have carved you on the palm of my hand. If we keep something in our hand, it may fall off. There is a risk that we may fall off if God had kept us in his hands. Instead, he said, I have carved you. I have engraved you in my hand. So there is no chance that we will fall off his hands. We are 100% safe in his hands. He is holding us in all the walks of our life. The second lesson that God taught me is that he is with us always. We cannot see God physically, but he has promised us that he is with us always. There are several such promises God has given us in Bible. Some of them are like this. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not for I am with you. Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. What else do we need? This is the promise God is giving to us that he is always with us no matter what happens in our life. Our God is omnipotent, omnipresent and an omniscient God whom we serve. What else do we need? Let us trust in this Lord. Many think our life is safe if we have wealth, if we have plenty of relatives, if we have political power, etc. But let me tell you, this COVID-19 has proved that nothing of that is true. Wealthy people die along with the poor people. Wealth cannot stop you from dying. Relatives, let me share an ex experience, an example from my recent work experience of working in ICU. I looked after a 39 year old gentleman who was infected with Corona, who was on ventilator. His brother is a doctor, a consultant. His sister is a doctor, a consultant in their own hospitals, in their own specialities. He might have thought in his lifetime that no matter what health issues comes, my brother and my sister are experts in medicine. They will help me and they will save my life. But sadly, you know that during this pandemic period, patients cannot have visitors. No one can come to help you. No one can come to see you. No one can come to rescue you, even though they want to. Sadly, this patient passed away, even though he had two excellent doctors in his family. Relatives have limitations. They cannot save you from death. Political power. Can it save us from death? No. Our Prime Minister of UK, was con he contracted COVID-19 and he was admitted to intensive care unit. And later he got better and discharged home. And when he, after he got discharged and went home, he, in an interview he said, I could have easily gone the other way. He came to the verge of being intubated and ventilated, but survived without. So political power cannot save us from death. Or oh, the only person, the only person who can save us from death or we, who can come with us through our death is God alone. During this COVID period, we all know that patients cannot have visitors in hospital. If they are admitted to a ward and if they are conscious, they can talk to their families, their dear ones, over the phone. But once they come to an intensive care unit, they will be sedated, intubated, and they will be on ventilator. They cannot talk to their families, and family cannot come to visit them. It is very sad. And I have seen the fear of death in patients when they are brought to intensive care unit and then we explain the procedure to them that we are going to sedate them, put them to sleep and then 
they will be intubated and attached to a ventilator in order to take over the function of their lungs. They are in such a breathing difficulty. The coronavirus affects our lungs first and the breathing become really hard. So we need to take over their breathing function. So when we explain this and when we are about to put them to sleep, the fear of going into sleep, the fear of death, I see them in their face, in their eyes, in their words. COVID-19 has proved to us that life is very short and nothing can come to save us. Nothing can protect us. Relatives have their limitations. Even nurses and doctors are being infected and being admitted and many of them have died sadly. Nothing can come to our path in the path of death to help us, to stand by us. The only person, the only person who can come with us through the valley of the shadow of death is our God. So let us cling to our loving God whom we can trust, whom we can depend upon. I am often reminded of our flight journeys. Even we do go home every two years and we have long flight journeys. And whenever we go on a flight, we never ask for the pilot's certificate, whether they have the right qualification. We don't check whether they have any license to fly the aeroplane. We don't check how much experience they have. We blindly trust this single person who have no control over our life to fly this aeroplane and to land us safely in our destination. Even during the flight journey, we are not on the land, miles and miles above, in the sky, over the sea, we fly and we are not scared. During the long haul flights, we do even sleep for hours. We have so much trust in this one man who have no control over our life. Yet, sadly, we don't have one percentage of that confidence in our Creator, in our God. That is why the Bible says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Our God is our Creator, our refuge, our keeper. Let us trust in Him. Let me share another experience in intensive care unit. I was looking after a 62 year old gentleman who was corona positive and on ventilator. We were doing our level best to save his life but we were losing him sadly. So we called his next of kin, his wife and told her that we are trying our level best but we are losing your husband whether she had any final words to tell him and she wanted to talk to him. So, but this man could not speak. He was that ill and he was dying. And I'm not sure whether he could hear, but we kept the speaker phone next to his ear on his pillow and the wife was talking to him. She was crying over the phone, saying her final words saying goodbye to him and I really struggled to stand there listening to her final words. She wanted very much to be with him but she couldn't. Hence she asked us whether I could stand next to him. I could be with him during his final hours and minutes holding his hand which she would have done if she could. I told her that I will do my best because because of the ICU trained nurses shortage, I had more than one patient. I had another lady who was on ventilator, who was on dialysis her, because her kidneys had shut down. I was dialyzing her and many infusions going through. And we do also prone our patients with all these lines, ventilator, machines. We do put them on their tummy to help the lungs to ventilate better for them to get better and then after six to nine hours seven to nine of us come together again and then we turn them onto their back 
So I was really busy. Not only that, the next patient after her, whom my colleague was looking after, he was dying as well. We were running between these patients. So, but still, I tried my level best to be with him. Whenever I got a minute in between, I was running back to him, holding his hand and telling him, I am there, he's not alone, I am with you, I am here. And late, sadly, few hours later, he passed away. All this, every death, each day in ICU tells me, if God is not our side, we will be alone in difficult times. When my patient was dying, the my colleague's patient, she's a Filipino nurse, her patient sadly passed away. One, once a patient dies, we wash them, put a white gown on them, and then because of this COVID-19 infection, we have to put them in a plastic bag with sip and seal them and send to mortuary. We did that for that patient, and then we were preparing the bed for another admission. When a patient dies with COVID-19, there is no formal funeral. There is no body viewing. There is no flowers. There is no family around you. It is not how normally someone dies and having a formal funeral. Whenever this patient came to hospital, before that, whenever the family, the dear ones saw him last, that is their last memories about this person, which is very sad. They might have been in the hospital for weeks before they died. So the family has seen him or her weeks and weeks ago. And even after death, they cannot have a final glance. Life on this earth is very short. In Luke chapter 16, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 16, we read about a rich man and a poor man. The rich man's name is not mentioned there because he is not significant to heaven. He lived a royal life and then he died. The poor man's name is mentioned in there. His name is Lazarus. His body was full of sores. Dogs used to lick his sores. He had no house. He was lying at the door of this rich man. He wanted to eat, but he had no food. He was very poor. He too died. And the rich man received a burial. And I'm sure he received a royal burial because he lived a royal life. And the Bible says, the rich man died, he received a burial, and he weighed into Hades. Whereas this poor man, he died, and we read there that he was carried by angels to Abraham's side. In Hades, where this rich man went, there is torment, there is heat, there is thirst, there is pain, there is anguish, there is flame. What does this teach us? Between the hell and heaven, a great chasm has been fixed, which no one can cross. This teaches us that it doesn't matter what sort of a funeral we receive. What matters is whether the angels of God are there to carry us to Abraham's side to take us to eternity. This teaches us that we cannot change our destiny after death. Today is the day. This is the time for us to decide our destination, our eternity. So let us be serious about our life on this earth and let us make the right choice, the right decision where we will spend our eternity. Coming back to my colleague, her patient died and we were getting another admission in that bed space. Our team leader came and wrote the name of the patient who is coming into that bed next. As soon as she saw the name, she broke into tears. And I asked her what happened and she told me, look at the name, this is my close friend who works as a nurse in this hospital. She is coming onto this bed on ventilator. I can't receive her. It's too hard for me. She was crying. When you are in an, such an infectious area, wearing all this PPE, you cannot hug each other. You cannot console by touching the other person. 
when your eyes are full of tears you can't wipe your eyes you can only blink or shut your eyes tightly for the tears to fall off you can't blow your nose anything that you do with your hands will pass on the virus to you we wear two pairs of gl gloves and anything that we do for a patient after we finish we take off the top layer of gloves discard it and then pair wear the new pair of gloves that's what we do i asked her to move away and be take some time to relax and the rest of us received the admission she the patient who came to that bed was a 44 year old younger than me a filipino nurse who was working in the covid ward looking after this covid 19 patients she got infected she got admitted to the same ward where she works and there she deteriorated so much that the doctors had no time to rush her to icu in order to intubate her therefore they sedated her and intubated her put her on a portable ventilator and rushed her on a trolley to icu when we received the admission we were all in tears if it is her today tomorrow it could be me or you that was the thought crossing through everyone's mind we all cried out to god all these different experiences taught me that only god can be our side whatever happens in our life as i speak even today that nurse is still on ventilator making only very slight progress we all are praying for her in such situations when there is when no one can help you not your family can come your family also cannot come to you it's only god who can be with you anywhere any time the third lesson that god told taught me was to use the time wisely whenever i think of using the time wisely the first person comes to my mind is joseph in genesis chapter 41 there we read joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sand of the sea later in the same chapter we read when the famine had spread over all the land joseph opened all the storehouses all the earth came to egypt to joseph to buy grain so what happened there there were seven years of plenty and during the time of harvest and plentiful joseph opened storehouses in every city and started to store up grain in abundance like the sand of the sea we read and later when the period of plenty finished and the famine came all the people came to joseph because they knew he had stored up plenty and he was able to feed not only his family not only the people of egypt but anyone who came to him from all the nations from all over the world that is the same situation today covid-19 crisis has affected the whole world like the famine in joseph time where we turn where do we turn to so this joseph teaches us that if we store up in times of plenty then we could feed our family our relatives our neighbors our colleagues and anyone who comes to us who is in a crisis so let us be wise to turn to the word of god during the times of plenty this lockdown period when we have plenty of time is the period of plenty for us god has given us one more chance in our life to turn to god in prayer to turn to the word of god to store up in plenty in our hearts so that in times of crisis in difficult times later in our life we will know where to turn to if we store up plenty bible tells us it will be a lamp for our feet when we walk it will lead us when we lie down it will watch over us when we are awake it will talk with us so let us use the time wisely and store up now let our just like the food that we give for our physical man let us make our spiritual man strong by feeding him with the word of god 
so that we can face any challenges in life and we can help others who are struggling in life. The Bible also tells us to look at ants. In Proverbs chapter 6, we read, Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Ant is a tiny creature, but we have a great lesson to learn from them. The Bible says to look at them and to be wise. Learn to be wise. They have no leader, no ruler, no chief, but they do one thing. They do gather their food during summertime, during the period of harvest. So they have nothing to worry at the time of winter. So let us be wise like ants to store up at the time of plenty so that we have nothing to worry about during difficult times in our life. When we are working in ICU, towards the end of the shift, we find some time to write our notes. Everything that we have done the whole day, we record. We try in between, but many a times we won't manage to write as we do each thing at the and then and there to make the record. And by the time we sit down to write our record, we are too tired. The whole day was stressful. We are sweating underneath the PPA because summer has started. And our hands are aching. We are wearing two pairs of gloves. And then we had been using the hands all day. Each time when we do any procedure for the patient, we take off the gloves and we immediately put on the, sec the next pair, clean gloves. So we had been working all day with two pairs of gloves. Now we have to writing with pen, with wearing two gloves is not easy. And we are tired. It's night already. We need to go home, need to drive home. When we sit down to write, if we have done 50 things, we may forget 20 or 15 or 10 out of the 50. So when we write our nursing records, after putting our signature underneath, we write COVID-19 crisis. Because if we have not written, it's not done. Even if you have done it, but you have not recorded, then it is equal to not done it. So when we write this, in future, when things have settled down, if with good intention or bad intention, if anyone sue the hospital or sue the staff, then we are legally covered that we were stretched to our extremes during this crisis period. We tried our best, but we have forgotten to record some of it. That is not possible with God. There is no bail. So hence, we have to be very careful to use our time wisely now so that we can boldly stand in front of God in eternity. Learning word of God is not easy. It takes great effort and it needs daily practice of spending time with the word of God. We should have a private devotional relationship with our God. We should grow strong in the Lord on a daily basis. That is what God expects from us, a daily gradual growth spiritually. There is no quick fix for it. There is no shortcuts. There is no ready-made solutions in it. God is looking at us from eternity and He is expecting us to reach the eternity. That is where He is waiting for us. He is not in a hurry because He knows it is a gradual process. Journey, Our journey is towards eternity and our journey time is the, our lifetime on this earth. It is different from person to person. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years. It is different for you and from me. But one thing we should remember is we are not at the starting point of our journey. We have come a long way. And at the same time, we have not reached our destination either. Through every incident in our life, God is preparing us for our eternity. 
He is training us, whether it is small or big, including this COVID-19 crisis. God is preparing us for eternity. He is trying to teach us some lessons. Every little and big decisions that we take in our daily life has a consequence in relation to eternity. Let us remember that. Our words, our thoughts, our actions, every little and big decisions that we take every day, how we utilize our time, how we utilize our money, how we utilize our talents, how we use our relationships, everything matters. Everything has a consequence in relation to eternity. God is watching us every day. He is reading our minds. He is looking at our motives. Let us be clear. Let us have a clear conscience. Remember, we did not bring anything into this world when we came. When we were born, we were naked. We came empty-handed. And when we die and when we go, we are going again naked and empty-handed. I told, as I told earlier, when someone dies, we give them a white gown, put them in a plastic bag, seal them and send them to mortuary. They may have big bank balances. They may have luxurious cars, beautiful houses and many other things in this world. Nothing follows them to the grave. Everything that we think that we own here on this earth, which we do not, everything that we think we have on this earth is a loan from our God to utilize while we are on this earth. So there is nothing to be proud of, nothing to take pride in it. There is nothing for us to boast about it. Everything is a gift, a loan from the Lord. We did not achieve it. We did not gain it by ourselves. We have to leave them behind or give it back to God what we received as loan when we go. And God will give it to the next person as a loan. So remember to utilize everything that is given to us wisely, carefully, as God wants us to use them, including the time that is given to us. Because everything has a consequence in relation to eternity. Eternity, that is where we belong. That is our home. That is our final destination. And we should make it there. So remember, life is very short. Death is a reality, as well as eternity. And eternity, the time period is really long beyond our imagination. And we decide our destiny while we are here on this earth. After death, we cannot change our destiny. And in this journey through our lifetime, God has promised us to be with us always. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us, no matter what happens in our life. And God is telling us to use this time wisely. Spend time with God. Spend time in prayer. Spend time with the Word of God. Let us be wise. Store up plenty when we have time. This lockdown period, this COVID-19 crisis period is the time of harvest for us. It is a time of plenty for us to store up. We have all the opportunities to turn to the Word of God now. Let us do it. May God bless you with these words. Thank you for listening and God bless you.